This video is created by Jagrat Creation. It is on liquidation of companies. I wish to solve one sum wherein how the liability for list B contributors are determined. Observe the sum on the screen. This is the sum that I want to solve here before you. Before I start, I request to refer to my previous lecture wherein I have discussed the theory as to what what is the meaning of list A contributory, what is the meaning of list B contributory, how the liabilities are determined. That theoretical concept has been explained in my previous lecture. So, if you want to, you can refer to my previous lecture. If you haven't, in liquidation of an unfortunate limited, which commenced on 1st of April 2017, certain creditors could not receive the payment out of the realization of assets and out of, out of the contribution from A contributories. So realized as the realized value of asset and contribution made by A contributories is not sufficient. And some of the amount is not paid by A contributories. So liquidator is required to ask for the unpaid capital to be paid by list B contributories. The following are the details of trans details of certain transfer which took place after 1st of April 2016. The date of liquidation is 1st of April 2017. Transfer occurred after 1st of April 2016. Now, liquidation commenced on 1st of April 2017. Then all the shareholders are acquiring a status of contributory on 1st of April 2017 and they are known as list A contributories. Now, the list A contributories are obliged to pay the unpaid capital for all the liabilities of the company till the date of liquidation but subject to a restriction of an unpaid capital. Now whosoever the transferors of shares within one year before the commencement of liquidation are identified as list B contributory and they are also asked to pay the unpaid capital if list A contributory fails to pay the unpaid capital. So, on the basis of this, the liability of list B contributory is to be determined. Shareholder ABCD, number of shares transferred, 1st of May 2016, it is within one year before the commencement of liquidation. Commencement of liquidation of 1st of April 2017, so within one year, so after 1st of April 2016, so 1st of May 2016 is after 1st of April 2016, so it is within 12 months. So all the transfers has occurred within 12 months before the commencement of liquidation. So all of A, B, C, D can be identified as list B contributor. List B contributors are required to contribute for the unpaid capital. If that unpaid capital is not paid by list A contributor, but they are obliged to pay that, they are obliged to pay subject to the liability existed on the date of transfer. So when A transferred the shares on 1st of May 2016, the liability existed in the books of company was 6000. So he has to contribute for 6000. But whatever the liability has increased after 1st of May 2016, 7,500 minus 6,000, 1,500. Liability has increased from 1st of May to 1st of July. So 1,500 is the increase in liability after the shares has been transferred by A. So A, A cannot be asked to contribute for the increase in liability of the company after the shares have been transferred by him. So A will contribute for 6,000 liability, but whatever the liability that has, that has increased, from 6,000 to 7,500, from 7,500 to 8,000, from 8,000 to 9,500. So all subsequent increase in liability for that A will not contribute. Similarly, B has to contribute for the liability existed as an as as at on the date of his transfer, as at the date of his transfer, 7,500. So for 7,500 liability, 
we can be asked to contribute for, to the extent of unpaid capital. But whatever the liability that is increased after 1st of July 2016, so 500 and uh, 1,500 subsequent increases, for that B is not supposed to contribute. Same is the case. C can has to contribute for the liability till the date of the transfer of a share that is 8,000. Subsequent increase of 1,500 for that C cannot be asked to contribute. All these shares where of rupees 10 is at six paid, six paid, paid up, ignoring expenses, remuneration to liquidated, etc. Show the amount to be realized from the various persons listed above. How how much amount could be recovered from A, B, C, D? That we want to work out, and that is being questioned to us in this sum. Let me prepare a working note for that. This is the details of the sum. Creditors outstanding as at the date of ceasing the ceasing to be a member, amount to be paid to creditors. These are the four persons A. A is having one thousand shares, fifteen hundred shares, three thousand shares, and two hundred shares. So. D is a member. D has sold the shares on 1st of February 2017. So D is a member on 1st of May. D is a member also on 1st of July. D is a member on 1st of November. D, is a, D has ceased to be a member on 1st of February. So D, has, D is a member for, for period till 1st of February 2017. So whatever the liability that has arisen, Till 1st of February 2017, he is supposed to contribute for that. So, C has to contribute for the liability up to 8,000. But subsequent increase after 8,000 to 9,500, C cannot be asked to contribute. And the contribution has to be made by A, B, C, D in the proportion of number of shares held by them. So, 1,000 is to 1,500 into 300 into 200 is to, is to 200 is the proportion in which the contribution is to be made. Now, let us start. So, 6,000 is the liability when A transferred the shares on 1st of May 2016. Now, A transferred the shares at that time on 1st of May. B was also a member because he has transferred the shares on 1st of July. At that time, C was also a member and B was also the member. So, 6,000 is a liability in which A, B, C, D, all the four has to contribute in the proportion of 1,000 is to 1,500 into 300 into 300 is to, I am sorry, 1000 is to 1500 is to 300 is to 200. So this is a proportion in which all of them are required to contribute for the 6000. So if you distribute 6000 in this ratio, 10 is to 15 is to 3 is to 5. So 6000 multiplied by 10 divided by 10 plus 15 plus 3 plus 2, that is 30. So this is how the distribution takes place. So 6,000 rupees are distributed in the ratio of 10 is to 15 is to 3 is to 2. This is the liability of ABCD. Now, subsequent liability as on 1 7, 2016 was 7,500, which includes this 6,000. So 6,000 is already distributed. So deduct 6,000. So 1,500 is the liability for which A will not contribute because on 1st of July 2016, a is not the member. So, in this 1500, A is not going to contribute for the liability because he is no longer a member on 1st of July. So, this liability, increase in liability 1500, has to be distributed between B, C and D because on 1st of July, B is a member, C is a member and D is a member because C has transferred the shares on 1st of November. So, he was holding shares on 1st of July. Similarly, D has transferred the shares on 1st of February. So, he was holding the shares on 1st of July. So, this 1500 will be distributed between B, C and D in the ratio of 15 is to 3 is to 2. So, 1500 distributed in the ratio of 15 is to 3 is to 2. A has not to contribute anything for this 1500 liability. This is how the distribution takes place. So, 6000 into 15 divided by 20, 6000 into 3 divided by 20, 6000 into 2 divided by 20. This is how the liability is distributed. Now, next 8000 is the liability. 7500 liability already distributed. So, remaining increase in liability 500 is to be shared between C and D because the date on which the this liability has arisen 500. At that time, C and D are the members. A and B are not the contributors. So they are not supposed to contribute for this 500 liability. 
So 500 will be distributed in the ratio of 3 is to 2, 300 and 200. Now, last ultimate increase in liability 1500. At that time, B alone is the contributory. A, B, C are not the contributory as on the date of 1st of February 2017. So D alone has to contribute for this 1500. So liability given to, to be contributed by D is 1500. Now let me have the total of liability. But this total contribution should not increase the unpaid amount per share. What is the unpaid amount per share? Share of 10, 6 per share paid up, 4 is the unpaid amount. So maximum liability at the rate of rupees 4 per share on the share sale. So 1000 into 4 is the maximum liability. 1500 into 4, 6000 is the maximum liability. 300 into 4, maximum liability. 200 into 4, 800 maximum liability. Now this 2000 or 4000, whichever is less, is to be contributed by A. 4125 and 6000, whichever is less, is to be contributed by B. 1125 and 1200, whichever is less, is to be contributed by C. And 2250 and 800, whichever is less, is to be contributed by D, 800. Now, total liability is 9500. Contribution received from A, B, C, D is the total of these four numbers that works out to be 8050. The amount that is not available to pay the creditors is 9500 minus 8050. So, 1450 is not available to pay the creditors and the contributors, be list B contributors cannot be asked to contribute this 1450 because their maximum liability is determined in light of the principles of equity. So, against the D's liability of 2250, he can be called upon to pay only 800 because he is holding only 200 shares and on 200 shares 4 is the unpaid amount. So, 800 is the maximum contribution that he can make. So, against the D's liability of 2250, he can be called upon to pay only 800. The loss of 1450 will have to be suffered by the creditors only. No contribution can be availed. For the payment of these creditors, creditor has to suffer this loss in the event of this liquidation. So this is how I have tried to explain you how the liability for list B contributors are determined. Once again I tell you that I have explained this concept in detail in my previous lecture. Refer to that. I feel that you have followed all these things. Thanks to all.